right. You ready? I'm sure. I'm going to ask you three simple questions. Yep. First one. What was the last fish you caught? Today? The last fish you caught. Were you fishing today? Did you yep. go fishing today? <laughs> was the most, most recent fish. The most caught. recent, the most go, recent fish was about a 28 inch snook on fly. Today? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's, That's good. a good thing I put yeah. a tracker in that little fiat. That might not help us, so I need to put it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth second podcast show with co-hosts Tim Summer and Ty Nelson. Everybody, you are listening to the Florida Fishing Show podcast. This is your co-host Ty Nelson. I'm here with my co-host Tim Summer, and today we have a special guest, Eric Henson. Eric, what is the name of your charter business? Casting Kayaks. Casting Kayaks. So we have yes, Eric Henson from Casting Kayaks, who's also part of Team Florida Fishing Products. Don't the kayak business fool you. He's also a phenomenal angler on the boat as well. We fished out of the Guinea multiple times. We pre-fished for an IFA together, which did not work out because we just didn't find the fish we wanted. The weather didn't cooperate. That was yeah. actually the end of my kayaking career after that. That was, a tournament, that was. Which we'll get into that because you reminded me of my story when you were telling me your manatee story. <laughs> but anyways, this podcast isn't about me. This is more so about you. Why don't you tell our listeners, Eric, like how did you get started with kayak fishing? Or really, let's go maybe all the way back to the very beginning. How did you get started with fishing in the first place? So fishing in the first place, I kind of got started uh, freshwater fishing. I grew up on a, a lake behind my house, and uh, we had a, a floating dock with a trawl motor, and we had a, a ginu, which I kind of fished off both of them. Um, my dad didn't do any fishing, but luckily my next door neighbor was a, a semi-pro bass fisherman, there you go. and uh, he kind of put me in and got me, you know, Learn, help me learn all the, the techniques and all the stuff and all use the right equipment and the right gear at a really young age. So my, is this like a small pond behind your house or is uh, it like a pretty it's, big? It's a pretty, pretty good sized lake. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's maybe a two acre, two or three acre lake. Nice. Not huge, but you know, but a decent, decent sized lake. And he would always, for his tournaments, he would keep the, the, his fish in his live well and release them into our lake. So it was, it oh, was yeah. yeah, it was, it so was stocked. It was stocked. It's it's some really, really, nice, really nice large. And reminds me of another story as well that we had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, when we were uh, when we were younger, we we released some snook and redfish and jacks into our uh, the pond in our neighborhood. So on one side, you had the Clusatchee River, which is like my dad's backyard. We had an awesome upbringing. We were super blessed being able to fish right, right behind the house. And in the front yard, we had this uh, lake that was basically attached to the river on high tides. Like the water kind of flow into it. Like a semi-tidal. Yeah, it's a semi. It yeah. really, really yeah. barely worked its way in there. But it was, in, it was brackish yeah. enough no. uh, to keep these snook uh, alive. I haven't seen a redfish in there, but we've definitely seen some big snook. And we actually had a couple bull sharks. Not sure who put those in there. A couple, couple, <laughs> couple bull sharks. And they, they actually... Thrive in this lake. They're still really, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's a landlocked lake. It's a landlocked lake. Yeah. So wow, you would see like bull sharks going up along the shoreline, banks, like, in the busting yeah. on tilapia or whatever. Sure. One time, yeah. one of our neighbors, Jeff, like he still lives in the neighborhood because my, my dad still lives there. Tim's parents moved out, but okay. so I still come back from time to time. And then we have neighborhood friends. His uncle still lives in the neighborhood, so we, we know what's going on. Right. And then our, even our childhood really friends, his parents the, still live there. You know, big forty inch, thirty five inch snook that they catch out of the lake, and and that I think um, there was one summer where that's I think that's all we did was loaded up, just loaded it up. And caught we, snow we would catch, and caught we would snow catch bait in the lake. We would catch bluegill in the lake, put them in these little troll flow buckets, bring it down to the canal. We'd chum up the mangroves. We'd catch these snook, and then we'd go transfer them into the lake. Nice. So we, we were just like we, we had a system. We, it was a, it, it was, was planned out. <laughs> I've <laughs> never <laughs> actually <laughs> caught a landlocked snook before, so that's pretty cool. I got it. We gotta make that happen someday. There's some really good ponds. Yeah. Really, really oh, I've heard of yeah, I've heard some some pretty epic stories. Sure. Granted, it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel, so it doesn't really right. count. Right. It's kind of like catching <laughs> bass in the pond. Right, exactly. Bring us back to that. Yeah. Story. So anyway, yeah. childhood fishing. Let's, let's hear it. Yeah, so so I pretty much freshwater fished until I was about fourteen. I mean, I did a little bit of East Coast fishing in the lagoon and the river when I was young, um, and then then I ended up uh, moving over to my mom's place, which was in Clearwater, Florida. And that's kind of where I kind of got started in, in, into kayak fishing. Um, I had a buddy of mine that his parents bought him a kayak, and we just kind of, 
I guess shared it. He kept it at he kept it at my house a lot of times because he couldn't keep it at his condo or whatever. Um, so I was able to use it a lot growing up, and it was kind of a sit inside, you know, the old school like oh, yeah. old right. school sit inside. But it got me on the water, and That's how I started with you know, well. yeah, I was able to you know to get it done. And, so was that um, fresh water or salt water at that point? That's salt water at that point. Okay. Where, yeah. where was this at? Um, so they lived in Clearwater, so it was all just the intercoastal to gotcha. Clearwater. There. So were you raised here in the Cayman Bay area or Clearwater? When I was 14, I moved here. Uh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. yeah. Awesome. And then we eventually, about two years after we lived in Clearwater, we moved to Sarasota, and that's I've lived in Sarasota ever, ever since. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I went, I went to high school. Pretty much through Sarasota. Gotcha. So yeah. through high school, were you primarily kayak fishing during that time? Yep. Yep. And then yep. even, I mean, moving through to college, what was your story there? Did you quit graduate college or go no, to college? No, I didn't even go to college. No, I uh, was a chef at a pretty young age, and I got an opportunity to uh, pretty much get entry level at the Ritz Carlton as a injury level chef and I pretty much worked my way all the way up to sous chef and I that's kind of how I decided I wanted to do kayak fishing charters as I had been there for about 11 years um, a buddy of mine we both left the Ritz Carlton to open up another restaurant and it had five different owners that turned them to be a just a, a, oh, yeah. a, a nightmare <laughs> and yeah, five my, different owners is very yeah, much. It, it was, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> and uh, so my wife, I had been talking about it with my wife for a, about a year or two, and she said, "Give it a go, give it a shot." Cool. So, Let's talk about that real quick yeah. because, like, that's a huge leap yeah, of faith. That's awesome. awesome. Oh, Your wife huge. allowed you to yeah. do that for one. I would not have been able to done it without her, <laughs> right. hands right. down. Like the first year was rough. Yeah. Um, after the first year, even even about I'd say about a year and a half, it was it was like my wife started looking at me like, all right, you know, we gotta we gotta you know figure something you gotta figure something out, and then all of a sudden it just clicked. Like I started getting repeat clients, and cool. it just started getting busier and busier and busier until I actually last year before the red tide hit, I was actually thinking about hiring someone to pick up take some more trips. Yeah. More yeah trips. Take, you're just getting worn out. I'm just get, yeah. Just getting the camera. <laughs> with them. Yeah, trips. exactly. That's, that's a good problem that's to have. Problem. It was a good problem to have. And then red tide came okay. and, uh, that Sarasota really, got hit bad. Huh? Sarasota probably got hit the worst out of yeah. anywhere. I, I mean, South was Florida was pretty bad as well. I think outside of like, Pine Island Sound, like Southern Pine Island Sound, right, right. there, like Ground Zero. What right. it sounded like was Sarasota was the Sarasota worst. Was Sarasota was, was, I mean, you could literally walk across Sarasota Bay, like stepping stones on fish. That's how many dead fish. I mean, it was wow. the whole entire bay, and it wasn't just, you know, bait fish and mullet. It was everything. It was sharks. It was turtles. It was manatees. It was all different species of game yeah. fish. It was everything. Yeah, all of our grass, like we had. Sarasota has always had some of the most beautiful, luscious grass flats I've ever seen in anywhere in Florida. Like, right. I mean, just incredible grass flats, and they just got demolished. Mm -hmm. I mean, we hardly have any even have any trout, and we've had, Sarasota. I mean, we had for for Southwest Florida had probably one of the best trout fisheries right, yeah. for, for a long West Coast, time for the West Coast. For the West Coast, right? Um, and. Now it's gone. Like this this year, the big girls never came in, and it, it it's yeah. It's been a turn. And so is here. the seagrass like completely gone entirely? Like entirely like flat. There's some gone. places where it's completely gone. And there's some places where it's just little nubs. It looks like it's actually burnt. You can actually looks like a fire might have came through, and there's like a little bit of green, but you can see the tops of them are just burnt. See, I've never heard of like red tide killing off grass. Obviously, oh, it killed it. It killed every. I mean, yeah. it killed all of our crabs. It killed. Right. I mean, I was seeing. I was seeing stuff life. in the water that I didn't even know lived in our water. Yeah, right, that, right. that was floating up. I mean, it was it. It just. Yeah, last year, last summer was bad. So, so that kind of put your business to a halt last year. Right? Yeah, right. pretty much at a at a dead halt. I still had people calling mm -hmm. and wanting to go, and it's been kind of like you know I can take you out, but. It's, it's it's not bad. I actually developed a dang cough, I think, from being out in it so much. Yeah. Um, and that, to this point, or at that time? At that time, when okay. it was when it was when it was like yeah. really good. Like I had this nasty cough for like three months. I could not get rid of because um, I was yeah. in the out, you know, just out there breathing on the dead fish and yeah. That yeah. stuff like every single day. 
And uh, now it's starting to clear up. Um, we still, we don't have many fish. Uh, we have, we have, I'd say out of all the different, out of snook red fish and trout, I would say we have mainly snook. We have very few redfish, hardly any trout. See, that's what's concerning. Yeah, that's what's crazy. Trout. 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 Just, you trout. can't even go out and get a 15 inch trout. I have yeah. captains calling right. me from everywhere. Know where the trout are. Police tell me where yeah. I can get my, my clients on a 15 inch trout. Jeez. That's crazy. And you just can't. You just can't. Yeah, I wonder why Sarasota got hit so hard. I guess there's just not a lot of water flow. It's almost like Mosquito Lagoon. It's got like two main inlets right on the side. Right, two end, main inlets. The very yeah. north end, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So, yeah, so Midnight Pass, they, 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 sealed that, they sealed that pass up. Okay. Where's that? Midnight Pass, the east. They're actually talking about opening a Midnight Pass back up as well. Yeah. Yeah, so we only, have the, we only have the two there. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, uh, I went fishing with you. We launched, where did we launch at that one time? It was in a pass. Uh, big pass. Big pass. Yeah. Like the Southern yeah. Pass. See, those, those redfish used to come in every year about, I'd say, June. They would start showing up in June, but like July and August is when those, I think that's about the time, time of year I took you out there. Um, I actually haven't seen, that school of fish used to come every single year and they used to hang out on that flat. I haven't seen them, and I didn't see them at all last year. And the year before that, it was not as crazy as like that huge ball. I mean, you remember that huge ball of red fish where it was just like a yeah. They just moved. Like we literally crossed like the entire bay chasing right. after them. Chasing, it's pretty yeah. big flat. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. I think you stuck one good one. I missed yeah. a good fish, and that was about it. And then they were gone. Yeah, they they just kept big ghosts huh. couldn't find them. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, so I mean, I still see you posting a lot of photos, catching a lot of fish. Are you just working yourself further north? So I'm having south? a yeah. So basically, I've been taking all my clients lately. I've been taking them a half an hour south of me, and a half hour north of me. Gotcha. I used to be able to like literally be in the water in seven, eight minutes right, and be right. on any type of fish that you could thought you know that you can imagine. And now I have to travel. Yeah. Um, the places where I'm traveling, I think, you know, the smarter fish that we're able to get away. We got all the things going on today. <laughs> we have the phone calls. We have, uh, we have the alarm. Fish. Yeah. So the, the smarter <laughs> fish. Oh, rag tag. The smarter fish. That's what you're saying. I'm trying yeah, to the smarter like, fish. fish. I if I say fish, there's a good chance I guess what we're talking about. Right. Yeah, right. the smarter the fish smarter that we're fish, actually yeah. able to get away and escape. The, you know the red tide went obviously north and south and just north and south of me it's on fire because I feel like our fish moved out, out to there then they already that survived. fish yes those are, yeah. and so it's actually been on fire you know about a half an hour south of me and a half hour north of me yeah. um, so you're still able to get your clients off fish a little yeah, more yeah, of a drive yeah. but you're a little just, more of a drive which is areas. a lot of my clients you know they don't they're usually in a rental car, and the wife wants to have the car for the day, and so it, it makes it a little bit tougher. But some, I've been actually picking up some of my clients, and just you know, got to get up to a little bit earlier. So how many uh, how many kayaks do you do you have? Like like if a group comes to you, are you able to so, take them out, or is there yeah. like a limit that you? I have four kayaks, and I can. I honestly only like to take out one to two people, but say, yeah. um, I'm actually about to add that to my uh, website that I'm only going to, from now on, only take out two people, because it just gets a little bit crazy yeah. having to put three different kayaks yeah. on, you know, one one area, you know, on one group of fish, you know, on this, you know, the fish are hanging out on this point here, yeah. and I got three, you know, three different kayaks right. trying to... Right. Yeah, you got to get them all positioned. For one, they're probably not used to being right. kayaks, kayaks are difficult to position. It's not like you're pulling a yeah. boat or you're using exactly. a trolling boat or putting the power pole down. Like, you have three individual vessels, right. plus they, your own, four total. And not only do they have different fishing uh, experience yeah. levels, but their right. kayak levels are, are all different as well. Right. So I get a lot of people that have either, you know, never kayaked, but have fished their whole life, or I get, even get people that uh, haven't fished that much, but are, you know, great kayakers. I get all different from all the whole spectrum of, of people, and it kind of gets tough when I have three people and I have three different, they have, you know. Yeah, one guy wants to sight fish, one guy's yeah, never exactly. thrown a rod before, and the other right. one is kind of yeah. Yeah. throwing some yeah. bass lures. Yes, I mean, sometimes I get out there and the guy's got the, the real upside down, and... 
you just chaotic. you know it's gonna be a long, you know it's gonna be a long day. Do you strictly throw artificials with these cards. So I try to fill I try to fill them out on the phone okay. beforehand. Um, if they've never thrown any artificials at all, I will pick up some some shrimp or you know some hand picks okay. or something like that. Yeah. Um, but if they have you know if they a lot of my planets from are obviously from up north because they're most of them are snowbirds are here on vacation. Um, a lot of them you know have thrown lures and stuff from bass and stuff. And generally, I can you know teach them pretty quickly. At, you know. They're not going to be experts by the end of the day, yeah, but, but throw I can, a paddle but tail doesn't it, work for you. Exactly. Throw exactly. it and kind of reel it at yeah. this speed. Right. You know, let's do that for thirty minutes. The funny That's thing is, is that the up. women, for some reason, listen so much better than the guys, oh, yeah. and the That's women funny you say that. always catch the fish. I've, other captains have they, they do the exact same. They thing. like they what really were you guys start about? They <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Pizza so that in them is. Yeah. They're better sure. listeners than we are, for sure. For but sure. I think men, like, we just have, like, oh, I fished before. I've had that. I don't know this. if I. Oh, right, I went right. marlin fishing yeah. over in Costa Rica. I reeled one of those things. Right. 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 Yeah. These little, like, pee pee trout. I don't know how to fish these things. Yeah. Or just sit over. We think we got that. That's it. Cool man. Well, so business is still still growing, even though even though the red tide hit, you're still still yeah. cranking with clients. I know when we went through a very tough time going through like September because I mean, from Naples all the way up to really up to Destin, we had red tide, but the main areas affected but, were from right. Naples to you know Tampa Bay, Clearwater area. Sure. Um, so that really that's our main market. You know, for us, we were born and raised in Fort Myers. We're based here in Tampa. Like that's a huge portion of our following and of our, of our fans and of our customers and our guys are in this area. So they heard everybody across the board. Right. You know, our sales plummeted probably seventy five percent during those months, which are already slow months. It was like seventy five percent on top on of top of yeah, yeah. right, right. seventy five percent right. for the slow time here, which is like basically nothing. We're just yeah. trickling yeah. by. You know, we we're at a point where we we're like. Is this even going to work out moving forward? Yeah. Like, I don't know about this. Um, one thing I do know is moving forward, like, as anglers, all of us, we need to be on the same page. And I know, obviously, Capture sure. Clean Water is doing a good job yep. uh, of kind of getting the anglers on the same page and, and working with our, our government to start putting new, uh, just new uh, law in it. order, new policies in order. Obviously, it's like going to be slow moving at first, but like we're seeing a lot of things changing, at least when it comes to Southwest Florida and Lake Okeechobee and Everglades restoration efforts. Like that's starting to speed up. Sure, sure. sure. I agree. One I of the agree. main things is right now they are working on changing up the regulation of how they release the water from Lake Okeechobee. It's always been big sugars first. They need to get their water, and we need to keep the levels like you know low enough to where it basically won't. First, the thing. So, uh, there needs to be enough water for sugar, right? Mm -hmm. But it can't get too high, or else we're going to burst the dike and partially flood out the town, which is really flooding out, you know, the agriculture there. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, they're always catering towards those south of the lake, never thinking about, you know, what's going on uh, on the east and west end. So, when it gets really high, they dump out as much as they can to get it to like a safe level. But when it's starting to get low, they don't like, they, they'll stop at a point um, to keep enough money or keep enough water to be able to, to, to continue to um, irrigate the, the crops basically but they don't have like a bottom level like what they could do is they could start to lower the level the lake level during the dry season to prepare for the rainy season right finally they're like looking at this policy and like yeah we really haven't been doing the best job of this we can work on this and so that in itself could really really help us out from getting all this fresh water and all these, these pollutants going into uh, our, our systems, our water, our sure. waterways, and basically causing the red tide to just go absolutely crazy. Yeah. Which, that drives me nuts that people call it naturally current red tide over and over and over again. I'm like, yes, this is a naturally a natural current current organism, but it is fueled, it is fueled, it is fueled, it is fueled, fueled, fueled by things that right. we make, by fertilizers right. that we make, Nitrogen. that we are putting yeah. into our waters, whether it be, you know, big ag or whether it be, you know, homeowners or whoever. Right now, it's coming fertilizer is doing it. And so is what is what it's doing. Right, exactly. <laughs> what fertilizer is doing, what fertilizer is going what's to do. supposed to do. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's crazy. I'm, I'm hopeful that things yeah. can get better. I'm, obviously, we've seen what's going on in Mosquito Lagoon yeah. and in your Lagoon. Right. right. And to see it in your backyard and my backyard, it's just like, when is it? Like, when is it ever going to stop? Does it ever stop? Does it keep getting worse? And so for if us, it gets yeah. worse. It's it's done. It's yeah. done. Yeah. We're out. You know, yeah. yeah, we're out. We're getting yeah. into a new business. So. Right. For us, it's like we need to lay the groundwork now and you know, 
basically continue to educate other anglers, I think. And sure. one thing that you can do with you know your clients is educate them on the issues and, and what we're doing to try and fix them and where the problems are at, which a lot of yep. it comes down to the leaders in our state. They are not on the right side of things. They're not really, they don't really care about our environment as much as they should. Seeing that everyone comes to Florida for its beauty, like we should be really focused on you know, taking care of our estuaries as best as possible. There's a lot of differing views and stuff, but at the end of the day, I think everyone can just agree with our, let's just take part, uh, take yeah. care of our estuaries. We still want to be able to have agriculture. It's an important part of our business. Right. Our, our, right. our, our, our state is a huge yeah. part of our economy oh, here in Florida. Sure. But we need to like regulate a little bit better to where like we're taking care of the estuaries as well, because we're talking multi-billion dollar industry when it comes to the fishing industry. And then obviously tourism and then our beaches are, are much, much larger than that even. So right. we got to take care of it. So we segued completely away from cool. yeah. fishing. Yeah. We talked about conservation, um, yeah. but it's always so a good, not good thing to segue to. Before, before we end, okay. I want to do a little lightning round here with Eric. All right. You ready? I'm just sure. going to ask you three simple questions. Yep. First one, what was the last fish you caught? Today? The last fish you caught. Were you fishing today? Did you yep. go fishing today? <laughs> the, the most recent fish. The most got. recent. The most go. recent Retreat. fish was about a 28 inch snook on a fly. Today? Yeah. Okay. That, right, that's so good. good thing I put yeah. a tracker in that little fiat. That yeah. might not help us. So we need to put it in the kayaks. <laughs> <laughs> Second question: What music do you typically listen to? Uh, mostly Christian music, but I like a lot of uh, like drum and bass and. You're like an instrumental guy, often. No, I like like dance music, like break dancing music. Okay. Like, do you break dance? Yes. That doesn't count as a question. You do break break dance. Yeah. Wow. Nice. You're gonna have to show us this later. <laughs> these days. This floors are pretty slick now. I'm saying you can probably think of work. Oh, I don't know. Oh. Third question. Third question. I'm making this off on the fly. Third question would be, what's gonna be books? I think that'd be a funny question to ask uh, captains. Books you read? Well, well, yeah, what kind of books do you read? Are you in what's any books? What's the last book that you read? Oof. <laughs> yeah, that's good for captains. The Bible, that's it. There you go. Hey, that's a good, that's that's a good, good answer. answer. That's it, man. That's what's up. Besides cool. magazines and awesome. some cookbooks. No, nah, it's good. It'd be the Bible for that, sure. That's good. Uh, I like that question. Especially yeah. for fishing captains. That's, that's good. awesome. Good. Awesome. I'm not cool. a big reader, for sure. Well, Thank you for your time, Eric. Thank I appreciate you. that. It was a good Before conversation. Before we go, where can, like, so I want to go on a kayak fishing charter. Where do I find you? Yeah. Uh, you can find me on my website at www.castingkayaks.com. And, or you can reach me at uh, 941-504-1349. Uh, so a lot of times my voicemail, I've been having problems with it, but you can shoot me a text and get all me that way as well. So is it O with three H's? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll so, link that so we'll cast link away the, uh, we'll link the description for you there. Look, casting, casting, casting kayaks. Casting kayaks. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And then you also you also write in Coastal Angler from time to time. Different yeah, I write monthly stuff, uh, so. articles in Coastal Angler magazine, yeah. and I do uh, stuff with Kayak Angler magazine as well. Awesome. So, so keep an eye out for that. Take a look. Good. Yeah. So, yeah. so right. this is. Eric Henson, everybody. He's a kayak angler. He's a ginu angler. You still have a ginu, right? <laughs> right. He's a skiff angler, which we'll hear about that soon. He's a, he's a great tournament angler and a great guide as well. So if you're in the Tampa Bay area and looking to get down you know, anywhere from Sarasota to what, what's as far as north as you go? For uh, Tampa charge? Bay. Probably Tampa Bay. So yeah. Sarasota to Tampa Bay area. Actually, Charlotte Harbor to Tampa Bay. I'll, okay. I'll go down to, I've taken people out in Mount Lachey. Cool. I mean, so. so if you're in like southwest to like west central Florida, if you're just in Florida and you yeah. want to go kayak fishing, you should reach out right. to Eric Henson right. and <laughs> he'll get you on the fish or make sure you he was linked up with a guy who will definitely exactly. put you on the fish. Yep. So uh, as always, thank you guys for listening. You know that you can check us out at FloridaFishingProducts.com. You can like us or follow us on Instagram at Florida underscore fishing underscore products. We're making a big push on YouTube, so hopefully you're watching this on our YouTube channel. Definitely subscribe to our page. If you hate it, let us know. If you love it, let us know. Share it with your friends. And if you have ideas, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Shoot us an email. Give us a call. We want to hear what you guys are thinking. We have the ability to create some awesome films, but we want to hear feedback so we know what to come out with next. You know, we're all about creating uh, just engaging content, so we want, to, we want to get good content out there for you guys. So, uh, once again, thank you guys for listening, and we are out. out. <coughs> cool.
Let's go save uh, Derek. He said he might be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Is he out there? Yeah. 